see most of the human race killed off because it is unworthy. It is unworthy of the gift of life. I don't care what society thinks. They're nothing anyway. They're no better than me. Until we hear the safe word, we will not stop. Have you ever thought what it would be like to see a person's head amputated? Think of things so horrible that the human mind cannot imagine them. See all this and more when you see on stage, in person, that crazy mixed up. I like being set apart from people. I like to be hated. Safe word with Jason Rouse. Hey, this is Jason Rouse, and welcome to the Safe Word Podcast today on the walking show today here in Austin, Texas. Uh, my friend, my pal, Yoshi Abiyashi, and if I'm not wrong, I did say the last name correct. I think you've told me that in the past. Did I deliver? It's Obayashi. Obayashi. Yeah, did, I got it, though. Did kinda, I kind of close? Did I, I I wasn't heavy enough on the B, and I think, and I mumbled through it. I just smoked a cannon before we left too, so I'm a little wobbly in the eye. Isn't this crazy? So come over here to the right lane, so we don't get run over by lesbians. Um, uh, What's the name of this lake? Do you know? This is the Colorado River. Huh. And you can see right here. There's an, actually a kayak um, rental place. Right here. What's this epic? What's up? Yeah. Anyway, um, I don't even know where to start. Like, I'm assuming. No, I know for a fact. The last time I saw you was at Russell's place, and I can't remember because it's usually a holiday that we end up over there eating oh, for free. <laughs> Wait, how long has it been? Uh, what was the last major American holiday? Well, Thanksgiving, wasn't it? Was it Thanksgiving or a holiday before that? I can't remember. I can't remember. Um, I'm sure I don't even know if I was Russell's place on Thanksgiving, now that I think about it. Mm. Maybe it was 4th of July or something. I can't remember. You were in the hospital. Oh, sorry. Not the hospital. You oh, were, yeah, I was locked up for medical studies. Yeah. Yeah, you were in the medical studies, and you were there like, I remember you're like, I'm in week one in a month. I'm, this is my first week, so and I'm going here and here and here. I think that's what happened. And two, you know what happened, Jason, when you listen to podcasts or uh, watch Instagram clips? Mm hmm. You forgot that you didn't actually were hanging out with that person at that moment. But you just remember like you were just hanging out with that person. I don't know. I, I knew what was going oh, on kind of. For sure. With you. For sure. That's the weird thing is like we always know because of the industry we're in. You know, we cross paths not so much in the last years, but we run into each other averagely like three or four countries a year. Yeah. Just on touring schedules or you were in a nearby country and you said, look, it's going to fucking it's going to cost me $60 to fly from. A to B, I'm already in Europe. And uh, anyway, fuck, I lost my train of thought again. Um, a squirrel ran by. <laughs> I, my parent leg. It's been, a, I mean, it's obviously, oh. obviously, it's been a very strange year. Yes, and, and we see each other through our social media, so we have an idea of who's alive and where they are in the globe but, for the most part. You know, this, this is going to sound weird, but um, a couple of days ago was Brody Stevens' anniversary. It's uh, your yeah. anniversary, right? I was getting all my memories from, you know, that he, he was... We had discussed, Brody and I, uh, on a handful of occasions about him coming to Canada. And um, he had concerns about the pressure of being the headliner. And I tried to explain to them, yeah, I go, Brody, you're a movie star. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, first of all, you, you can come and host my shows. You can do whatever you want and come to Canada. And then we were supposed to do a show at the Sycamore Tavern. And uh, I remember looking at the flyer, and that was the night that he'd, he'd uh, taken his life. So, And then I, guess, I went to all things comedy podcasts and yeah. cried for like... 
Ugh, it was it was terrible, terrible. Did you go to his wake at the store? Yeah, yeah. Did you remember but, what Jeff Ross said? Uh, uh, vaguely, but in, I guess my my point was. I didn't really say this, anything this time around because what is there to more to say, you know? And people are saying that um, they wish they would have spent more time, but that, that's the sad time, sad thing, isn't it? We only appreciate people kind of when they're oh, dead, but totally. that's why I talk about family arguments and, yeah. and things like I go when all this fucking the bottom drops out of this. Like It goes It's so fleeting All of this I try and revel in Life On a daily basis And uh, When uh, You see somebody That charges you up So much And then it is absent From your life Like that was One of the beacons Of hope At the store Is you would see Brody And if you were lucky enough He'd say your name Announce you Jason I tell you Where you were from and your name in front of a group of he strangers. Was, <laughs> he, he was he was a great guy, and wow. it it was interesting that um, within a few days, I don't know which came first. Now I'm guess I'm a little um, spazzed out, but you know, Patrice, uh, his documentary was released a couple of days before Brody's anniversary. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, I don't know about you, but you know we are getting older, and. Man, it's just like last couple of weeks, I lost two of my comedian friends, and I used to think comedians live really long or very short. But it, it seems George like, Burns very he misled the yeah, exactly. the guys doing stand up at a hundred. I, I, I was a goal. I think it's very misleading. I, I just think comedi- comedians don't you usually don't live that long. Are comedians like really tall people? They have a short lifespan. Um, Are we like in, NBA players in, of show business? It's funny. You read it in my mind because I was thinking about <clears throat> what Larry Bird, Larry Bird said that, you know, he's almost, what, 6'8", six, 6'9", six, or something? Yeah. Alive still, right? He's alive, a, but a he, does, white one. he doesn't think he'll make it to 70. I remember him saying that years ago. Um, certain profession... Comes with a certain amount of rewards and danger, I think. But I don't know. I, I think comedians live in long time. There's few examples, but I think that's a very misleading number. I, I think, think it's a mis. A lot of it's. I think the majority of it is a mental health issue. I I don't think it's like they're too broke to die on heroin. You know what I mean? Like that was a that was an '80s comedian. You know, Mike McDonald, yeah, Mitch Hedberg. Uh, there was a, a number of guys that would chase the dragon, but now comedians are dying on sh- sugary soft drinks and uh, muscle atrophy from from sitting. You see the comedians, they like, fucking fat. The white the white comedians are like they all look like they got scoliosis and cankles. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So let's talk about some shit. Like, if, if you're, if you, if you're good at beating people up, it's not socially acceptable thing to do. But if you're really good at it, you become champion. You can monetize it. If you're good at gambling, it's not a most acceptable type of lifestyle, and people lose their savings and family fortune. But if you're good at it, you could monetize it. I guess. And if you're good at fucking, you could be a porn star, I guess. But uh, all that tells me is it's people with problems just happen to find a good narrative and profession out of it. But um, it doesn't really deal with their problems, you know? No. I mean... Well, that was the thing. I think a lot of the industry would isolate some characteristic about you, whether it would be a race thing or a sexual thing, and make you focus intensely on that. And it would be very misleading it's to you, misleading. to your own uh, creative person. And you kind of pigeon-held yourself because you want to be successful. You want to be liked. And why not just do the dance? You know, with well, the, daddy's got shit on his shoes and I don't dance. With Brody, I mean, you know, I, he I, could I, dance within a, 
I've certain, known him, I've known him for, for way longer than most people out of the comedians. That does, but that doesn't mean I knew him well. Yeah. But I always thought that this sickness with uh, trying to get validation from show business, I. It's, it's a really t- t- you put yourself in a terrible position, I think, you know? Well, I was thinking about He'll this. never get the month he needed. A lot of people put a lot of attention on what the feedback is they're getting from the Internet and from the general public. And Brody lived a lot of his life through... He streamed hours, days, months of video live constantly. And when you got the peanut gallery... Throwing barbs at you on a daily basis, yeah, and really personal shit because he lived his life. He was very open about who he was and his 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 accolades and uh, his shortcomings all wrapped into it. And um, I know, to- um, I know. Uh, sorry to interrupt. I know that um, when they used to talk about Andy Kaufman, yeah. I, I think I'm more tolerant of him. But when I was young, I didn't kind of he. He kind of know me, uh, people who perform <laughs> yeah. like that. But the he thing that women. But the thing you can uh, roll with that part. You were cool. Uh, <laughs> that part didn't bother me. But anyway, <laughs> but they used to say, "Is he insane or genius?" And I say, "What's the fucking difference?" The thing is, mentally ill actually helped him yeah. make audience laugh. So. These people are sick. <laughs> See, this is the thing I love. About- these, are, these are sick, sick people. Yeah. Very funny people, but nevertheless, they're sick. And they're va- getting validated from public for being sick. And they're getting m- money and stuff. Yeah. So I, I know, I get it. Like, this is how getting much- laughter is an addiction, you know? So, And I'll d- double park that. Jim Carrey went crazy imitating Andy Kaufman in About a Life, about his movie that turned into to be a documentary about Jim's documentary. Yeah. life during the process and how, you know, I don't know what comes back and what stays when you do something like that. Like I have this theory that um, some comedian, some critic complain like, why, why don't they go back being funny? You know, they went, no, no, but seriously, no, they take that. That's rude. They said, why don't you go back? Go back. Go back to what you're good at. Don't try other things, right? Which is rude. But why is it that, you know, somebody like Jim Carrey and Eddie Murphy, they're saying stuff like that? It, it, I kind of think it's it's not that they don't want to go back to be funny, but I, I, doesn't it seem like maybe some of their funny was just completely taken out of them? That they're, they're left with nothing, you know? Yeah, and that's I why think, some guys die legends, because that was maybe as good as it was going to get for them. Yeah, it's, it's I like, don't know what Kinnison would have had after his sobriety as a career. Because because that, because because I think the anger would be fake, because I don't think he would have been that angry. Like, yeah, like Eminem now, you know, it's hard to feel the struggle of a rich... Uh, underdog. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I, we don't want to say just because they're rich, they don't have any problems. They just have a new set of problems, you know? Yeah. But, uh... More money, more problems. But, I, I don't... I, I used to thought that maybe they've been so funny for so long, they went and tried serious acting. But, I don't know, when you work in show business, you hear all the stories about Britney Spears and Dave Chappelle say no to 50 million, but... I don't care how par- how talented you are. It just seems like eventually the system would just crush you. Well, first of all, if you live in your highs, if you live try and live in your highs, yeah. you're gonna die. You gotta have a dramatic role in there. That's why I was so eager to do some serious. You know, the bet I wasn't gonna do a serious drama, but I wanted to do horror because it had drama in it. And um, uh, it was a it was a, a painful process to be able to forced into the structure of someone else's ideas and stuff. Isn't it weird? Because people look you in the eye here. Do they? Yeah, like people will look you in the eye and acknowledge your existence. I very, think very, I, very different from LA, where totally different. Uh, Fahim Amwar had that joke where he learned. He lives little, here now. 
Yeah, I, I, I moved here for Christ's sakes. Uh, I heard this the funny thing that he used to say in L.A. One of the first things he learned was when they're shaking hands, whoever is shaking your hands, looking over the shoulder to see if there's somebody more important than you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's 100% true. Yeah, totally true. Or uh, my, fa- my favorite is the Sam Tripoli, which is... He's shaking your hand, looking at his phone. Yeah. Talking to you. Yeah. <laughs> I know a lot of people like, nothing say like you're a piece of shit and they're not worth my time. I have something better to do than check my cell phone or, you know. Yeah, it is a, a fucking, like crabs in a bucket, right? Yeah. Speaking of crabs, you've been on the road. Um, <laughs> I've been traveling. Yeah, like in a time where it's not an, a, you're not being, you're, that's a bad thing to do now, Yoshi, is to get on an airplane. How do you feel about that? No. Yeah, there's people on the internet that think you're a piece of shit. I. <laughs> first of all. He's taking a deep breath. No, for like, I, 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 ne- I'm, 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 I'm never, I didn't really believe that stuff in the beginning with. No. And even if it's true, I'm, I'm not gonna. Like, you can't, they can't force me to live. No. Uh, their ways, you no. know. No. Um, but what bugs me is all these people say, "God, you're so lucky going to those places and traveling." Like, um, nobody's. Nobody's keeping you away from doing that. That's uh, what I've been screaming at people. You, you, you don't want to. You don't. You empty. Don't, There's airplanes waiting for people. You, you don't want to do it because you really don't want to do it. Yeah. And you I know? think they're they're worrying about. Even what? if you, if they say 100 percent sure you'll get COVID traveling, I will still do it. I would totally do it, dude. I've been licking toilet seats at truck stops for 50 years, and I'm not even 50 yet. Yeah, I know what you mean, because when you travel, it does make... The the time seems longer. Well, what's that river in India where they leave their dead? Uh, (laughs) Is what? Is that... Here we go. (laughs) What is that? What what river don't they leave their dead? Have you ever seen how many people are there? No, there's a famous river. Is that like an Indus river? Anyway, they burn these... They have these half burned corpses because the graves are so full that they leave the corpses yeah. and they float down the river the, the river is like beyond uh, it's got bodies been rotting in this river and people bathe in this river sure well these corpses these smoldering corpses are going down the stream yet their their fucking immunity <laughs> to sickness is through the roof like this thing is riddled with parasites and and just anything that would just break down tissue and kill the normal that's what uh, our good friend Russell Peters do, do, he was saying something uh, in effect I saw him in a rickshaw and Ray Ray tells me he's seeing people taking shits on the sidewalk at the cross light yeah uh, <laughs> he, was, he was basically saying like, I want to go he was, That's my move. He was saying Indians are not more of a COVID because they got plenty of other worse shit in India. Yeah. And that never stopped them from living their lives. That's what I mean. Like, when you live in the... in the, But also, they also believe in reincarnation. So maybe maybe they have a less fear of a... Yeah, immortality yeah. Is, is a kind of a more of a... I don't believe that. Nonsense. ...thing, you know. Everyone's got their fingers crossed in some form or another that they're going to manifest some sort of higher life and uh, the truth is folks well tell them didn't you tell me I said under the door there's no God the, I, <laughs> I I've been saying this life is me I looked down the uh, can't breathe guy who? George oh George Floyd yeah someone peeled down there in Texas form someone ripped down the uh uh George Floyd banner, but uh, the graffiti looks poor. <laughs> there you go. You're gonna get a fucking shit storm on the internet. Maybe it was the rain, Yoshi. Maybe somebody didn't just rip that <laughs> banner down of that poor dude. Um, um, as far as that stuff you're talking about, I know some people get upset. I don't know why they care why. I believe these things, but I just hope when we die, that's it. It's, oh, it's over. Nothing, right? 
And <laughs> but how do you measure nothing? And and I also um, I like I, my friends don't like when I say, it, but I do think life is completely meaningless. So that's why I'm relaxed. You know, there's aliens right upstairs here <laughs> clapping right now because you said meaningless. They've been listening in on this podcast. Yeah, I got big alien following on my show, so I know the aliens are like. Oh shit! Life is me and Colt. They're all like, "Oh no, Yoshi!" Whoa! But Jason, I didn't say I didn't. I do believe that, but that doesn't mean you can't give meaning to it. You know? Exactly. And I think if you're born in some shithole country and die, and uh, within the first six months of your existence, there's no way you could convince me that that person's life was meaningful. It was completely meaningless, right? In statistics, you, you have to be given some uh, uh, opportunity to do something with your life. But if you're, if you haven't been given that, I just think it seems completely meaningless. So, and not even given. Even if it is, if it's in your realm, your playing field of life. Like yeah. some people don't. If you're never had a passport, yeah. you know. Oh uh, yeah, even physically paralyzed. I'm not a Nazi. I'm not saying that person shouldn't exist. I'm just saying... I left my hometown, like Luke Skywalker. Yeah. High as shit. <laughs> so... There's a cop... But, 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 but the, the whole point was, all these friends would say, Oh, there's a funeral going by, Yoshi. You know what that means? Um, <laughs> to, at my church? That means... My foreskin's gonna grow back, <laughs> and the calamari kid will strike again. This, um, yeah, we, there's a, that's a gorgeous hearse, by the way. Yeah. That's if I was ever gonna uh, own a vehicle, it would be a modern day hearse that I got out the back and make it look like a, uh, a limousine, I think, with spoked rims, hydraulics. You know, Alexis uh, I was is in New Orleans last four or five months, twice. That's a big business there. Like the performance art of the funeral. And oh, yeah. I don't know any other state that does it. I, I, get, I bet it's like a, a lot of cultures sometimes where it's a big production, you know. Sure. The, the celebration of death is, I guess, you know, rejoicing in the idea of their life. And what their contribution was, I guess. But going back to what... Mine's uh, going to be a Chuck E. Cheese with 60 drunks. Jesus. Shitting in the fucking... Punching out the wait staff. <laughs> but going back to what I was saying about friends who said, like, uh, you're lucky to go to those places. At the end of the day, when you had... When most of us had so much time last year, and if you didn't take that time to make your life better, you were never going to do it anyway. Yeah. You're, you're never going to take those trips. Yeah. So stop fucking bugging me about going to places I like. Yeah. You choose to have a fat, stupid wife and stupid kids. Yeah. That's your goddamn problem. That's your goddamn problem. Don't. Now, if you're happy with it, then be happy. But um, your squad sucks. So. <laughs> now, I can't... tell everybody, I go yeah. poison your dogs and leave your wife. Now, if you're happy with her and with your kids. That you made a good decision, but um, jump, 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 <laughs> jump, jump. We're on a bridge, by the way. If anyone's wondering what the background noise is, this is interesting. I know you're a bit of a history buff, and you know the result of being a traveler, you get to see some firsthand shit. So, um, what we're coming up to is a placard here, and it's it's a 1867. It almost looks like a Swedish word. It's a trail. A Texan trail here. I guess there's just, you know, it, what were we getting in 1867? Like, no one had teeth for 100 miles. And it was a longhorn, you know, this is where all that fucking be. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, tech, uh, University of Texas on uh, Austin. I think every football game they bring those big fucking ball to the field. They're big. They're just They're scary. Ass. They're really scary. They're super scary. First of all, 
if you put a plow Are we on the lane? On the bus lane? No. No, no. Okay. This is suicide lane. I wanna, I'm going to hand us two swords. We're going to draw, like, eh, cut ourselves and then fall over the bridge. But we're going to crazy glue our hands together so it looks like we were a couple. We'd be on the side. Oh, really? What about people who jump up and down in elevators? Does that piss you off? Does this um, bridge feel like it's doing one of these? What's her name? Was <laughs> and, uh, Daniel Denmark. Jonathan? No, Jonathan's client. <laughs> okay. Branson's client. She's East Indian. Lives in England. I'm, I'm spaced now right now, but yeah, we were walking. So there's two towers in Copenhagen. There's a bridge connect to it. As soon as she find out I had an issue, she was jumping up and down. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And my head was start spinning. Yeah. That's the same asshole. That when you're high on acid, they it's start very making. Funny, but I don't like it. They <laughs> make they make shit in your face and ruin your trip. Yeah. Yeah. You you're you don't need extra like. I'm sure. Look at you know the glass floor, the CN Tower. Oh no! What's that? Okay, you know that tall building in Toronto it looks like a heroin needle. Yeah. I guess it was the largest freestanding structure until like I don't know '94 or something like that. I think, uh, actually, I think a building in Hong Kong. Isn't there a building that uh, breaks height records in They're Hong Kong? trying to do that. Yeah, yeah they got crazy. I, I, I did a gig. You know I did a gig in Hong Kong. Yeah. And uh, we're all over the place subjectly. But I loved Hong Kong. I had, um, I think I got him to sign a letter for my green card. A Canadian diplomat came out to my show. Who was like the guy was like 30, and he's front row and at the show in Hong Kong, tells me he's Canadian and that he's a politician, and uh, I said, listen, I go, I'm applying for a green card. Can I get a letter from you? He goes, yeah, I give you a letter. I go, oh, so I think he helped my case. Oh, he actually wrote it. Yeah. See, the Canadians they fall, um, keep their words. <laughs> yeah, I know. You guys are full of shit. When I say you guys, like. America, uh, it, it, in fact, it's at the point where no, the if, people if, here. If somebody though, actually said they're going to do something and they actually do it. More often than not, I'm surprised. That's why I'm completely blown away by the people here. There's there's a consistency and a value to what yeah. they're telling you. And uh, when you've come from Hollywood, where nothing has any weight, it took me a while to figure that one out. Actually, yeah. what are we looking at here? This is a uh, see. There's all kinds of uh, musicians. Uh, I mean, isn't Austin this, known for that? They're mainly about music city, I thought. Yeah, well, people are over it. South by Southwest is canceled for this that's year. The, that's the only, first and the only reason I was here first. Was South by Southwest? Yeah. Um, it was all nerds. My friend Eddie Wong, who has a... Eddie book. Wong? I took karate class with Eddie Wong. No, I don't know. I know. I have met him, but I don't know him. He, uh... His movie, Boogie, is coming out next uh, month. What's it called? Boogie. Boogie? Yeah. Is he very nerdy, kind of longer hair? No, no, no. I don't think you met him, actually. Okay. Um, Russell met him, but he didn't really pay attention. But he, he um, fresh off the boat, that TV series, it yeah. was based on a book that he wrote. Um, he uh, made this Wasn't that originally a Vice show? I think yeah, oh, he, by the same. He, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's he, he, Vice. He also had a show on Vice. Yeah. Remember when Vice was like the shit? It couldn't be any w worse. Yeah, I mean, they fucked that brand into Velcro running shoes and chicks with pussy hair on the back of their knees. I mean, oh, a duck just puked when I said that. It went like this. I said pussy hair in the back of their knees, and the duck went oh. Um, I know they got in trouble for um, sexual harassment cases or something. There was a big New York Times article. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably. You but put you give a bunch of nerds the power of media. Watch yourself, Yoshi. Uh, in Williamsburg. Thank you. Sorry about that. Thank you. No worries. Thanks. See. People are very quiet here. Did so you hear that? There was. He said more than one word. Not like fuck you or. You cunt, In LA, or, or like, oh. move it away, faggot. Yeah, and how can they tell? 
when they can only see us from the back? Is it the way we walk? <laughs> <laughs> but um, do you? Th- I was. But, but going going back to uh, Eddie, he was here, um, so I thought, well, maybe it would be fun to check it out. And no wonder he's extremely successful because. He started at, uh, um, oh, fuck, what was the name of the restaurant in New York? Yeah. But he was also, also a stand-up comedian in New York and also a lawyer. Um, and, sorry, Eddie. Um, but he has a, this amazing restaurant. In, He's a lawyer? He was a lawyer. He was also stand-up. Bastard. That's how you get into show business. You studied law. Yeah. Because they know about contractual stuff and the, the bells and whistles of it. I show up with a blank canvas, shit, piss, and blood. And I'm going, like, where do I stand? These guys know all the... Anyway, I can't read. You you did learn all your laws when you got arrested. All right, all right. I knew that was coming. I left that out. I hope those vultures that are circling you uh, pick your eyes out. (laughs) But... (laughs) But it's not even just law school. You've been arrested way more than me. It's not even like uh, uh, law school stuff, right? It's um, when he was giving speech at the South by Southwest. He, he, I mean, Eddie is basically like uh, poor man's Oprah because he was able to speak to yeah. people who are in position of power, corporation, right? But like Oprah, he was able to make connection with lower class. I thought he was just okay. franchise kids, yeah, entrepreneurs. He was, he was a very impressive person, you know. Yeah. So, um, you know, he's in the same group with David Cho, David Chang, and all those um, young Turks in show business last yeah. business. Yeah. And, you know? and we're talking millionaires. Yeah. Like one of them's a billionaire, right? I don't. I, I don't know how much money they, they got buy, left, <laughs> but. David is offered a gig to paint a mural at Facebook. Also did Russell Peters' Red, White, and Brown cover. I think you facilitated that after he did the Linkin Park cover. He did Russell's album. He also did, uh, I have to say... Takes the Facebook... uh, I think it was my favorite thing that he ever did, which was... Yeah, it's great! He did a cover for Patrice's last album. Ah, okay. It's the one with him, with the elephant, with the, you know... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, legendary stuff. We well, we were in the studio that one day, and uh, David has got those um, um, the machete uh, uh, portraits leaning up against the wall, yeah. like like they're going out. They're just kind of laying around. Yeah. Anyway, I was uh, completely fascinated by. Anyway, that was the reason why I was here, but um, I guess I didn't really see most of the city because. Either it changed so much, or I didn't see the part that changed a lot. Yeah. But, yeah, it's always some really weird historical reasons why these things happen. Like, you know, the you're, area- you're, you're the music person. Why was it in late 60s in Liverpool all these great musicians lived there? Or why are the most of the, these Silicon Valley tycoons who were born, like, 56 or 57, like... You know, guy who started Oracle and uh, Microsoft. They're, 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 Oracle's right by my house. Yeah, they were all like, uh, according to, uh, um, God damn it, what's his name? 10,000 hour guy. Uh, oh. Uh, um, anyway, he was saying that they were all born within a certain time period and born in a certain area, like Paul Allen and Bill Gates knew each other. So uh, something really weird. Really, Historical things are going on Austin with comedy because yes, it's probably like number one destination right now. I mean, I've also heard Tennessee, Florida, and then, I, I guess there's some revival going on in like uh, Vegas and yeah. Phoenix. But I think yeah. Austin seemed like oh head center. and shoulders. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, ten I mean, years oh. again, ahead of everybody. Ten years, ten years, ten ten open mics a week. Everybody. Okay, and sold out comedy shows indoors, downtown theaters, 300 plus people on a Thursday. <laughs> it's weird. Paid. I mean, I get it with a comedy. Sold out Kill Tony shows. They put the ticket links up the day of the show. Is that right? There hasn't been a, a, an unsold ticket since they started. 
every Monday there's there's 130 kids on the sidewalk ages 20 to 30 uh, waiting to get 60 seconds on a show that could potentially look at red band hands out guest spots to some of these guys on the week for the weekends if they bring I guess, it I guess my problem is I just have no idea um, <laughs> I have no idea like Who's who? What's popular? No, you were asking me about Tim Dillon. Yeah. And uh, you're like, <laughs> yeah, he, you know, as far as waves in, in the podcast, yeah. in our social circles of stand-up comedy, um, every, you know, and the, these, these juggernauts, yeah. you know, uh, under Joe's umbrella, yeah. um, are seeing their best. Everyone's getting to see the best, and they're getting to see the best do do what they're the best at, yeah. uncensored, and in turn is creating these these mega stars that no one has even seen live yet. Yeah. They haven't even seen them live. Um. You know, look at the is that a finch? No, I think it's a female blue jay. I mean, I remember Jim saying... <laughs> you don't care about my bird stories? Oh, uh, no. Um, it, <laughs> J- I'm out here getting J- a touch J- of nature. Well, Jay... Well, J- Jay Leno. I guess that's... A, isn't that a blue type of bird? Anyway... He does yeah. bird-like, doesn't Leno? He, if his uh, chin was a beak. He, um... He basically said the key to his success was working really hard and always staying in line. And um, yeah. as soon as somebody give up, like, hey, I'm that much closer to wherever he's going. And it's probably true. He's, I, he was a company guy. You know, that's why I think some comedians, because comedians inherently are the rebel outsiders, you know, against the grain sure. type of people. And for um, Leno... To be in a position where he could open up a door to yeah. his fellow comics. That's why he got along. But that wasn't his responsibility. That, that's why he got along so well with uh, Seinfeld. Because Seinfeld's attitude was, this is show business. And yeah. he's, he's uh, actually kind of more conservative in that. That uh, if his boss told uh, um, Conan... To change your time slot, that's what you're supposed to do. You know, First, he wasn't making any sort of judgment. He was saying that this is show business, and sometimes you don't get what you want the way you want it. You know, and I think. Yeah. Um, oh, we don't go that way. All right. Um, so. First of all, look. That was really uncomfortable. That that is all void when you're famous. When you're famous, you can show up drunk. You can go look at Charlie Sheen was getting what a million bucks an episode. On crack, high yeah. on crack. Whoa, whoa! Oh, there's a nest up there. That's why. Those those two crows. Are they crows? They look crow-like. They're cool though. I'm thinking about buying a raven. Oh wait a minute. Did like you... Edgar Allan Poe. I'll get a brown raven. Did you hear what happened to Lady Gaga? Yes, last night. Double anal. I heard that. <laughs> No, no, come she, on. She would much prefer that. Why? What happened? You don't know? I'm not a. I'd look at. I'm sure she's a lovely lady. Um, that guy looks like the guy who owns the pawn shops in Toronto, Russell Oliver. Um, That's so weird. Her dog walker got shot, and two or three of her dogs got kidnapped. Last night in LA. What's Hollywood? <laughs> what do you mean? Okay, were the her dog dogs stolen or the uh, dogs are stolen? And the person who was walking the dog got shot. And it's in critical yeah. condition. Yeah, Last time I check. Yeah, like yeah. Was this random or or it happened because this they were specifically no. belonged? This is what happens. Dog. This is the equivalent. This is the white girl equivalent of uh, a rapper getting his chain snatched yeah. in between shopping sprees bragging about what he's holding in his social media. And yesterday when I was doing a pod... With it's the purge, bitch! Uh, <laughs> it's the purge! Yesterday when I was doing that pod with Dylan and Brian Holtzman, they were talking about some psychopath movie, Seven Psychopath, whatever the movie, it has something to do with people kidnapping dogs. 
Uh, and it's money. It's lucrative. They're kidnapping a bunch of dogs, and in the house, there's all these dogs. And whenever people put a reward sign, they will bring the dog oh, and collect it and paint the dog. So to look like the the missing animal. Yeah, yeah. They take it to uh, some psychopath movie. I can't remember the title movie. I oh, thought this was, is a film. Yeah, I thought this was a great idea. No, no, it's it's, <laughs> it's, it's a movie, and. I don't remember the exact title, but it was really weird that they, we talked about that during the day yesterday. And here we are with the lady got... Whoa, Look at that. It's a, it's a robin. Huh. Beautiful robin. It's for somebody who travels as much as you do. I think you're more, you're more curious about the underworld aspect of... I need to see because birds people, jump people around. People are more interesting to me, but... Um, but you know, I you do, don't like the I, unpredictability of... Animals. You'd rather be with 50 junkies than two parakeets, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're they're, yes. not, they're more interesting. <laughs> um, fifty but, uh, junkies or two parakeets, and you're going to go fifty say, junkies. Uh, so, uh, I'm all over the place. I usually do this by myself, so yeah. Now I'm just screaming into your neck. Yeah. So does that look like me? No. That looks like you. You have a when, when the sun hits your face a certain way, you look a little Samuel L. Jackson. Where I get a little Don Knotts. No wonder I hate myself. That looks like Brian Holtzman, actually. <laughs> Doesn't it? That looks like a really fat um, Robert Mitchum. <laughs> <laughs> I know. No, but you know what was so funny? Uh, we were doing a pod with that kid, Dylan. He's 26. Mm. I don't think he get 90% of reference uh, that Brian and I use. No, no. It doesn't make him stupid. It's just We're just old. No, but, but yeah, we're old-ish. No, we're old-ish. No, look at us, though. We're pretty active. We're for knocking on the uh, uh, death's door pretty soon. Dude, I've been shitting in front of that door for 20-plus years. As soon as I got into show business, I just looked at my body as a vehicle to get me to the fires. That's all. So everything moves fine, man. Like, I, you know I rode a bicycle from Niagara Falls to Toronto? High on heroin? When was that? In the summer last year. How long did it take you? Uh, 13 hours. By yourself or did you go with somebody? No, with my buddy with the blown out asshole. By the way, follow Boomer Phillips at Boomer Phillips on Instagram and ask him about his asshole. Uh, you know my buddy with the blown out asshole? The gaper? I don't think so. Oh, I'll have to, I'll show I don't want to see it. No, no, at the I end of the show. See it. No, no, I don't no. want to see it. <laughs> I don't want to see it. I know you don't, I don't Yoshi. See, I don't need to see it. I don't want to see it. This is a guy who'd rather hang out with 50 junkies to be interesting. Oh, look at how nice these birds are. Oh, now I remember what I was saying. I was really blown away by friends who were able to take me to woods and they could identify all the different trees. Oh, okay. Those guys are uh, rapists. That's, that's, <laughs> yeah. Look at how neat they look. They're like blue. They're, we're standing in front. Do you mind snapping a picture of these guys? So they're really pointed beaks. Yeah, these guys have had their rocks thrown at them by kids. They're not... And they're taking a look. First of all, they think one of us is going to eat them. They're kind of cool. They're like, look at how black and blue they are all at the same time. I think I'm having a What's stroke. Gold chains. They're wearing gold chains. <laughs> <laughs> are you telling me these with a switch birds? Right? Yeah, they got birds. Do you ever see the videos online with the bird with a knife in his beak? <laughs> Have you ever seen that? No. Dude, there's a guy filming a video out of his back window, I think it looks like. And this bird has picked up a steak knife, and he's just flying around with a knife. I think they like shiny stuff, I think. Oh, of course. It's, they offer it. They, they trade knives for pussy birds. <laughs> they, go over to the, they fly over to the female bird. They put the knife down. He flips it around a couple of times, makes it look a little more important than it is. And thinks that she needs it, like a pair of shoes or a soul. <laughs> Anything. And what does she do? She goes, nope. I want a spoon. 
I want a fucking spoon. I don't even know what a spoon is, says the bird. But I want the spoon. And the guy's like, I got this, this sword knife thing. You don't want the sword knife? It's got a handle. You can cut shit with it. Look at, I got it in my beak. Look at, look. Just shake my head around. Ah, I got a knife in my beak. I'm the only bird with a, a fucking sword. And you want a spoon. So says, yeah, I want a spoon. He takes the knife. He flies up into a tree, kills a whole family of sleeping robins, stabs them to death. Well, and leaves. Not with this fan fiction. <laughs> it's a new animated series I'm working on. In Canada, I grew up on a show called Fables of the Green Forest. Are you being serious right now? I'm completely serious. And I, I know that you love cartoony type things. And uh, I'm also a fan... Usually with tentacles, but go ahead. Yeah, that's true. And that's, that's the thing I love about this cartoon, is it had all the uh, um, aesthetics of a Hanna-Barbera or yeah. early Disney stuff, animated stuff. And, um, but it was always... there was People were getting disappearing and murdered yeah. in this... Uh, animals they could all talk to. They all talked to each other. And there was a whole song... And uh, there was Maybe a wolf because that of would COVID murder people. And, and because of COVID and people can't act in a movie, so many stars are doing animated series because that's the only viable thing you could do besides it's, podcast through Zoom, you know. And you save your brand yeah. and you're relatively anonymous, not to mention, if you, as you know, how many, how, how lucrative. You get a voice gig on a series? That, that, or uh, on a, a can- commercial campaign? Those guys are... Look at, look at Michael Buffer. He just he does that. Now respect to him. That that's yeah. a real that's a real gig, uh, an anomaly in the entertainment industry. But uh, to I know at a glance, like people, are, yeah. oh, the comedian's on stage for an hour. You don't do anything. It's everything after that. He's got rehearsals. I mean, I was, Buffer. I, I was really surprised that. I, I, I can't remember their names, but the two star Sopranos are doing podcasts. I couldn't imagine that two years ago. But no, so many can't people, ignore it. Yeah, they they they, they can find any other work. So during the COVID, it really changed the world in a way. I guess we'll we will know the, the uh, repercussion until years later. Even Zoom will be changing so many jobs now. You know what I mean? Like, why do I need to go to work every fucking day? You know, podcasting. Once or twice a week. How about that? Podcasting is the same. It's pornography to the film industry. You know what I mean? Like, to entertainment, anybody who crosses into the pod, like, like Joe had Rob Lowe on the show, and he repeatedly addressed that Rob could just set up a microphone and start talking, and people would come in droves. He started one. Did he? Yes. Of course yeah. he did. But I bet he you... With Magic Johnson and all that stuff. He's probably under a branded thing where he's he's not talking freely. He's still being the company man. You know, if Rob Lowe got Wild West and started talking crazy shit, dude, his career, it would get away from his Bob Saget thing. And uh, I don't know. Why am I giving Rob Lowe career advice? You know, I saw him in a nightclub. In New York with Giannis in probably 2000 and Giannis the comedian. Yeah, they were hanging out. No, we were we. Giannis's manager at the time had relations with CA. We got invited to this CA nightclub. Oh, I see. And Rob was sitting in the booth, uh, and I couldn't stop staring at his skin. I was like, he. And this is this is 2001. I was like, this. My Giannis is like, he's like 60 years old. Girls are falling into the... Look at the guy. I, I know he's a sober guy. And uh, he couldn't have been more uh, composed and friendly. He said a simple hello on the way out. But... Uh, I don't care what people say, uh, even at older age. Uh, he's that's one advantage men have over women. Because oh. when you get older, uh, you, if you're good looking like him and famous, you're, you look distinguished. Yeah, but what if you're distinguished and you really just want to be hideous and left alone? You just can't fuck anymore. And you're trying to gouge out one of your own eyes. 
to make or scar yourself. Yeah. But he is a. Um, he, that's what SoundCloud rappers. Yeah, They're all good looking kids that slash their faces up so they look like toilet brushes. Gives them some sort of grit that they couldn't earn on the streets. Okay. Oh, yeah. But, you know, he he's a good looking guy. And I remember <laughs> when I was working at Michael Dukakis' campaign in 88, 87, 88. Who does he play for? He, um, I don't know what that is. You know, Rob Lowe got in trouble because he was supporting Dukakis, and there was a tape. He was fucking some underage girl. This oh, was, uh, back in the 80s. Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's amazing that. Uh, Look at Yoshia Cardinal. A legit red bird. I can't even see where. See that red thing in the grass right there? Oh, yeah. It's like going for a walk with your grandmother, isn't it? <laughs> Look at the birds, Yoshi. You couldn't give a fuck. Honestly, if my back was turned and you had a rock, you would probably throw it at that bird. Um, I can't say no. It's kind of neat, though. It's a red bird. And for whatever reason, it's it's crouched down, maybe. Uh, I don't think it's got a nest on the ground. Does it got a nest? I don't know. Anyway, enough. Let's talk about your cancer. Um, if you're going to talk about birth for a minute... It, it is interesting that uh, when people talk about consciousness, they think about birds. Like your your senses? The reason why traditionally people think about consciousness with bird because when you wake up in the morning, usually it's the birds that wake you up. There's association between the two. Um, or you're still high on coke from well, the night before and the birds are driving you fucking nuts. There's, there's this, I mean, I don't want to get too heady over here, but um, Wagner's opera and Siegfried, when he slays the dragon and drinks the dragon's blood, Ooh. first thing he noticed is that he could understand the language of the birds. And so ah. birds have been always associated with, like, waking up. Freedom. First, you go from a dream world... Yeah. To conscious world, and a lot of time it's because the birds wake you up early in the morning with their chirping, you know. So I mean, I'm not really good at like associating um, which. Are birds, you telling but, me? But um, if you ever saw Exorcist, oh, have a, I? There, there is a. You must have heard me beating off. Um, <laughs> if you watch Exorcist in the very beginning of the movie, when this priest is fighting a demon. I don't know if you remember. That's the very beginning of the movie. There is a... a Yeah, terrifying scene. What a way to open a show, right? Holy shit. That demon is Pazuzu. Yeah. A Sumerian god of uh, uh, demons and birds and things like that. Okay. And he he has typically been known to have greatest amount of humor and use his humor to convert good people into doing terrible things. Wow, that's what I do. So... Am I Pazuzu? Pazuzu. I love to be Pazuzu. And I think that's my uh, face uh, tattoo. And it's funny. Um, Pazuzu? Pazuzu. And it's funny. Pat Oswalt in some cartoon did a voice for a character named Pazuzu. It's a, 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 this good, a, a evil uh, bird god. And, and this is somebody that leads people down the wrong path by charming them with humor. Yes. It's, it's, it's my it's, guy. It's, it's it's not it's not the traditional. To feel ashamed for what you're laughing evil at and, and threats. No, no, no. It's like a really good con artist. They exploit your weakness and greed and stupidity through humor. And uh, women have meetings. Hello. About that. It kind of reminds me of Norway. The guy had two Nordic sticks and some sort of um, fused spine. Yeah. Um. Do you think you can come on a hunchback with really nice tits and uh, the biggest dick you've ever seen in your life? <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, a, a dragger of a wiener yeah. with perfect... It's super good. And it, it, it was super happy. And like... <laughs> it's super... Oh, Yoshi, another Robin. How many... How much longer... Be, where's your... Is that your uh, apartment over there? Uh, my apartment is... My apartment is over here. Okay, so we're not there. Yeah, right there. We're literally a little past half. I'm feeling really guilty because I ruined um, the dryer. Dryer for um, fucking bubblegum Billy over here. Who has candy in their pockets? Goddamn. And in your fifties. I thought I took everything out of my pocket, and she told me to take everything out. And she texts me, "Hey, you left uh, chewing gum or something." 
and God damn it. never leave gum in your in your on your person. I always ask the chick with tons of lipstick on. Ooh, there's a dirt squirrel. Hear him, Mr. Whiskers. Listen, Whiskers. Whiskers. He's rat eyeing me. That's terrifying, though, squirrels. Why? Because if they ever got organized, they could bring this fucking country to its knees. Dude, have you ever seen a swarm of I, squirrels? I do, I, I, it doesn't serve us over me. They have a joke about they're so stupid. They always hide their nuts, but they can't remember where they bury it. No. that's They know that uh, statistically that they're, by default... They are planting seeds for future generations. That's not why they're doing it, but they're doing it. Well, they're hiding it so that they can go back and feed, but they know that they have a general idea and per seed yeah. is going to, what their food's going to be like for the year from just repetition of their, in their guts that um, there's going to be a couple seeds that are actually going to take root yeah. and turn into trees. And I think that's how they massage each other from the earth. And uh, I'm still baked. Yeah. <laughs> what is this uh, chair? A uh, memory of Ron Kalunchink. I think he was a local accordion p- player. Well, I know that uh, if you die before me, we're going to dedicate like a torture chamber under Jason Rouse. You know what? That would be cool. <laughs> No, it's just a urinal with my face stenciled in the back of it so people don't piss on the floor. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know. How do you think you're going to get murdered? Some third world country in a bad neighborhood? I think uh, smoking uh, opium. Whatever it is, it's it's always most likely something unpredictable. That's the thing. You'd like to think that, but it'll be something silly, like a banana peel in the bathtub or something. Yeah, or... (gasps) Yoshi, there's more ducks. Or, uh... They all look like tuxedos. Those are the kind of guests I'd like to have at my wedding. Just 12 ducks and me in a canoe crying. Yeah. It's nice, though. It's Like you said, you called me. Uh, we should kind of recap a little bit of this. Um, I was supposed to be here last week. It was too fucking cold, and it's all fucked up. Not too cold. Um, out well, of power and water. <laughs> and first of all, you're snow. Canadian, so your sense of cold is probably a little different from yeah. Texan. I know what's life-threatening. in Scandinavia, too, yeah. so, you know. Yeah, I was eating ice cream on the roof, trying to get people to sign up for my tennis class. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was not, um, not a, um, a brutal thing. I knew what temperature was. And you I knew... Know, all these fucking uh, idiots complain about tech crews going to... I don't know, Puerto Rico or, or DR or whatever. Well, first of all, <laughs> isn't that what you're supposed to do for your wife and kids? Be hypocritical. You're going to do what's best for them first. Everyone else would have done the same thing. And two, it's a hotter place. But why is it that nobody ever complained when Bill Clinton was flying with Jeffrey Epstein to Pedophile Island 25 times? Nobody. Th- I mean, that's also hot, too. But Did nobody. He? Yes. And it hasn't been brought up. It's been brought up. Nobody. No, they're so used to. Did everything die with Epstein? Does every is all hope for justice in the future lost because they killed the key, the figurehead? Not to say, look at how many eyewitnesses on a laundry list of crimes. Jason, the greatest pedophile is the one who never get caught. He's just a, some a useless idiot. There's yeah. plenty of other people. Doing that kind of shit, you know. I went to that um, Cosmo Pizza in D.C., a.k.a. Pizzagate. I went there. How is the food? The food was great. They said (laughs) said 2016 election, they were saying that Hillary Clinton and her elk were hanging out at that basement of Cosmo Pizza and fucking kids. I personally went there. I didn't find any basement. I did BYOB. 
You brought your own boys? Yes. <laughs> babies, I was going to say. <laughs> oh, I was trying to clean oh, it up. Oh, clean it up for the list. B-Y-O-B-B, B-Y-O-B-B brown babies or brown, brown babies? Brown baby b- butt bangers. But brown baby butt bangers. So people, people are just making all this crazy. Yoshi, there's more ducks, man. Yeah, cool. Can you believe this? Look, everybody, it's ducks. Who doesn't love a duck? They're very nice ducks. They don't look like disease-ridden, you know, vermin. Anyway, uh, we should be looking. I think there's a sign up here that oh, tells anyway, us. we're going to take Cruz, like. <laughs> He's the. Uh, um, people, people do hypocritical stuff all the fucking time. Welcome to the world. You know. First of when, all. I mean. Obama said he wanted to help support public school. Do you honestly think he's going to send his daughters to public school? She, he sent them to private school because everyone say one thing, do it another way. Uh, you know, so... Look, he's a I politician. What, well, I don't know what Ted Cruz possibly could have done, r- really, honestly, at that point. Look, at, you got an interconnect, internet. Home is where you hang your hat now. There's I mean, no so office die, anymore, but, you know. Let's take a uh, canopy fund. What's what are we dealing with here? Do you think the people who died actually voted for Ted Cruz? Probably not. They they're usually poor and brown people. They probably wouldn't have voted for him. I'm just being real. Uh huh. I don't know. I uh, I've heard the names. I've never uh, paid attention he enough. He looks like a vampire, and during 26th election, um, Trump said his father was Zodiac Killer. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I don't care what people say. Is Trump... Oh, the president of Canada and president, I think he was the funniest one. Do you think Donald Trump will ever perform at a comedy club here in Austin? What are you talking about? He did comedy for four years. Donald Trump? Yes. Oh, I know, but I mean like in a ticketed comedy show with other comedians. Do you think Donald Trump... the whole CPAC, the Republican thing a couple days ago. I bet you Joe Rogan brings Donald Trump on stage to do a stand-up act in the next five years. I would love to have seen Trump on... With Eddie Murphy. Yeah. And... Well, fuck it. I'm going to throw Jim Carrey on the pile. Jim Carrey... No, Jim Carrey would not... Eddie Murphy? No, Eddie Murphy would not. No one's going to share the stage with Donald Trump other than he was Joe a, Rogan and he, Russell he, Peters. <laughs> he was never a dictator. I, I do think he's an incredible performer. I don't care what people say. He was an incredible performer. and I'd love to see Russell and Joe roast Donald Trump. Well, you know what happened last time? They uh, kind of did that. Seth Meyer and Obama at the... Uh, um, yeah, Washington uh, Press Corp. You know, and then you should have seen the look on Trump's face, because um, you know, <laughs> yeah. Ger- German and German Americans are known for their ability to get over humiliation, right? Yeah. But that, and and Obama and Seth Ma- Seth Meyer, they think they have no impact. But I've seen that look before. Oh you know? yeah, comedians have been and, taking and, down kings for centuries, literally. Literally. Wait, so do we get over the bridge? Yeah. Okay. Then we just go that way. <laughs> and it's going to start raining probably in about 15 minutes. And we'll be walking that, in the door. That, that area kind of reminds me of Vancouver, Canada. Yeah, totally. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's even stretches of highway coming into the city. It feels like coming in from Hamilton to Toronto. Just some of the landscape. It, this is kind of looks like Toronto uh, 30 years ago. You know in, in the skyline. Uh, Jason, I kind of want to do this thing where uh, how many provinces are there in Canada? It sounds so fucking ignorant. Uh, first of all, I don't know. We should do a po- I should know, but I'm, I'm so... Uh, the, the Canadian education system, I'm not going to say it let me down, but... Um, no, Jason, I, it you didn't let them down. <laughs> I totally let them down. I tried, man. I was a maniac. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Like, how were you as a student? Were you atypical? You were a terrible student? When I was... Uh, Where did you go to school? In D.C. or... Washington State and in California, Torrance. 
I remember my teacher in third grade oh. got so mad at my paperwork. Yeah, but you're not he, dumb. No, 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 dumb. no. But he crumpled my paperwork. I don't. I'm telling you, he crumpled the paperwork and threw that thing right into my stupid face. Because they could do that back in Japan. <laughs> in fact. Japan parents. Because we're on the bridge, I'm going to pause this. We're going to come back because this is going to be terrible. If I had sponsors, that's where I'd put them right there. Hey, and if you want a sponsor, go to jasonrouse.com and there's a way to make donation to the show so I don't throw myself off this bridge. Um, did you see my movie? No, I saw the trailer. That's probably enough. If you were a 20-year-old girl with cigarette burns on your arm, I would say this is the film for you. They probably killed themselves after them watching the movie. You know what? Or at least add me on Instagram, one of the two. You know. So we're, we're walking over, uh, I don't know what bridge this is. In and around the um, Ladybird, there's a bridge where bats live under here. And at night, millions of bats leave the bridge from sleeping all day, like open micers, and descend into the skies to feed like a swarm of millions of bats. Do you want to go down there with hot sauce and see if we can get this party started? <laughs> Me and you. Okay, picture this. Wait, is this... I know this is not a good podcast thing to say, but... Because they can't see what we're talking about. This complex is the same complex as yours, or is it different? No, I'm down more, but there's a... There's a um, you can see this, what I was told, this was the bad part of town. It is? It was. It was. It was. So now the bad part of town's on that side of the highway... I know, that's that's I know the when part. When say bad parts, that means you know minorities. I understand these things. It's always like Martin Luther King Jr. When you're gonna, I uh, think that drive. I think that's the road over there. Martin Luther King Jr. Drive. It's it's like Harlem have all those funny names like what was it? Not funny, but you know Marcus Garvey, Malcolm X, way whatever you know and. Yeah, it's, their, it's the way people are apologizing for their fuck-ups locally. It's their Schindler's List. No, I don't believe that. I, I, I always believe that was uh, their way of, like, giving white people, like, the, the, the so-called um, non-minority people that, that this is a bad area by using those names. You know that's why they put Tim Hortons on railway stations in Canada? Do what? They put a Tim Hortons at every real estate or um, train station in Canada. What's the word you To commemorate to all the Asian people that died making the railroad there. Oh. No, I can't tell this to me. Um, there was a, a, a generation of railway workers that came through Canada. See, Canada has this nice... We got a good publicist... But there's some fucking bullshit under that maple syrup. Yeah, and like you guys have that butt light of racism. You know, and like we're more filling kind of racism in America. Yeah, you guys are fast food. We're more whole foods racism. Yes. It's very categorized, packaged, labeled, government sealed. Um, racism it's, can be harmful. They have a picture of a summer. It's pasteurized. Yes. It's racism light. You're right. It's yoga hate crimes. That'd be a great, great show where you do a yoga class and you come in dressed as Adolf Schittler. It's a character I'm working on. Is that my underwear in the bushes? Oh, no, it's a plastic bag with a smashed tomato in it. It does look a bit like that Japanese flag. <laughs> Isn't that uh... a... <laughs> what? Yeah, I like looking under bridges because I know that I'm going to end up living under one of these... Perfect timing. Hilario's asking us if we need a. Is that how, am I saying his name right? Mm hmm. Um, if we need a ride to show tonight. And he, he want to know if. Is uh, there a show tonight? He want to know if Josh Wolf is in town. I have no idea. 
Oh, maybe Josh Wolf is performing at Vulcan tonight. There's a laundry list of people that are coming to town. Like, is that right? Yeah, well, we got Segura's here the first week of April. Uh, if you see him, tell him hi for me. I will. I will. Um, uh, I swear, when I heard Tom Segura's name first, never met him. But when I heard Segura, I really thought it was like a Japanese-American guy. Segura? Sounds, yeah! It sounds like Japanese. Like, like a Suzuki. So when I saw him, like, wait, are you... Are you like he speaks perfect Spanish. Yeah. He speaks fluent, you know. Uh, yeah, he's, he's an anomaly. And married comedian to an uh, equally and as talented uh, funny wife. Like, that doesn't happen. Where you guys are just two black belts yeah. raising a family. I, it kind of gives me hope. I'll never have that. Neither of us. Are you crying? No, that's my eyes look like that. You still want to go back and throw rocks at that exotic bird that we saw? It's not that I, w- I never done stuff like that, but I was I could never hit them, so I just stopped doing it. Not out of kindness. Okay. I was very un- unsuccessful being animal cruelty. Did people try and recruit you for various sporting activities that you just failed at miserably? Uh, yeah, I was a really terrible athlete. Yeah, but you're only thing I was good at is my stepmother's head in. Yeah, the old boot fuck. <laughs> what year was that? 2003. 2003. Wouldn't huh? it be funny if I show up 20th anniversary and just shock her and just kick the shit out of her again? That'd be great, but you drop down out of the ceiling just <laughs> on her back. <laughs> ah, got you, bitch. There's a, there's a crazy bird around here. It, it looks like a, a turkey duck or something. It's got a big red orangey thing on its face. I have to say, one of the greatest film. No one likes my about, birds. About nature is obviously Hitchcock's Birds. Oh, terrifying! Uh, there's so much sexual tension in that movie as well, but it's fantastic. And uh, anti-feminist feminist Camille Polia wrote a book about that, and uh, highly recommended. But it's was uh, I, I had a run of that last uh, summer. I think I watched rewatch. About a dozen Hitchcock movies. They're just fucking unbelievable. Very well done. His obsession well with the beautiful done. blonde woman. <laughs> In black and white films. <laughs> so. Yeah. No, it was, uh, was he a shithead? Was he like, did he come out as a misogynistic scumbag or? There was a movie about Tippi Hedron, who is the father of, um, uh, I mean, her grandmother of uh, Dakota Johnson. Who, whose mother is, you know, Melanie Griffith and Don Johnson. Ah. So the, the three generation beauties, you know. But um, I don't know. There was an HBO movie about her relationship with Hitchcock. He did come across a bit of a creep. A guy just waved at me. He doesn't even know me, and he waved right at us. What a fucking, fucking what a, scumbag. What a piece of shit. <laughs> right, right? It's so nice, though. Uh, it that's reminds me, it's like Canada in the 70s. Um, People were just kind of open and. Did you ever watch that? Hi. Did, did you ever watch uh, Last Seduction? Yeah, when you did it, it just come off uh, insane, like kind of creepy. Who? You just hi. Yeah. To that guy, he's like, "Hey, fuck off!" In his eyes. But wasn't it weird? He had a Superman T-shirt on, but he looks a little downsy. He totally did. He didn't have a stride. Oh, look at the ducks, Roshi. You see the turtle? Oh, yeah. Look at that one. Big one, little one. That is crazy. Yeah, there's all these turtles that hang out here. That's probably one of the bigger ones I've seen, actually. Where's my slingshot? Where's my slingshot? <laughs> you take that turtle's head right off, and then his shell would just slide down off the log into the water. They'd all have to be headshots. You shoot a turtle in the ass, and you just, well, you're a jerk. So you're here for the week. I only have one good show so far. Ah, no, that's not even. First of all, they're not shows. We're, I'm not complaining. We're at open mics. This is very consistent. You're with at open mics <laughs> with with kids. Twenty years, your your junior. Are you kidding? Thirty. No, no, no. I mean not age. I mean like career wise. Like you, you've got you've got two decades. These guys are in year four. You know what I mean. So it, it gives you hope. There's there's a whole new generation of losers coming up. 
It's it's a little weird because they know way too much about me, and that's that's something really new. I know it is really new. I noticed that no one cared because before about com- you. Uh, when, when, when I go to comedy club, uh, especially when in the beginning, like uh, no one know me, and I know everything about the, all the big names, right? This kind of reminds me 1999 when I went to the porn convention mm-hmm. for the first time. It's really weird. Did you get porn to Mike Tyson? Yeah. I think I saw a video of you handing him DVDs in Vegas. Not just that, but we took Tyson to meet up with this one of the best-looking transgender porn star. He had no idea it was a guy. Wow. After he came or before? I mean, you should have seen the way... I'm going to edit... You should, you should have seen his look on his face. Yeah. Dude, I lived in L.A. Yeah, the, the, uh, the more the woman looked like an out of shape guy the more of a woman she was yeah um <laughs> oh but going back to watch 19- for the shit storm here going back to 1999 it was very strange to go porn convention the first time because i'm actually meeting for the very first time in person but i know exactly what their pussy and assholes look like whoa 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 we're live we're live yoshi it was good to My see mother your sister, listen- by the way <laughs> <laughs> well, we're live. I could see you driving that Corvette. What do you think? Rebecca Rouse. I think that was her name. Do you, uh, what is that, like 70s Corvette? It's cool, right? Uh, it's not in good shape, but yeah, it can be restored. It's the MILF of the vehicle. It's totally a MILF car, right? Yeah. And this is another thing. I, seeing palm trees in Texas with frost on them and snow... Is uh, was weird. Yeah, um, I don't know. Maybe I should have come. That would have been funny to say, like, yeah, out of, all, out of all the years, I picked this one to come. Oh, the worst time in history to be here. No, and I thought, like, I knew that if you showed up, you knew what you were getting yourself into. But uh, it was I mean, stu- no, I mean, it was I, stupid. But knowing what your room looked like, I, I would have been fine. But I had no idea. Yeah. What this, you know. It just sucks. Sitting in the dark, listening to somebody breathe in the other room. <laughs> you know, no internet. My phone was down to like sixty oh, percent. So you didn't have internet either. No, no power, no water. First of all, okay, let's recap. There was a snowstorm here in Austin, and when I say snowstorm, there was approximately first like a, gener- one of the worst one in like forty years or something. Uh, I heard thirty, and I heard seventy. Yeah. So. Regardless, they were not equipped to deal with it. I lost power and water uh, for three or four days, and the temperatures got down to minus uh, 13 to and 16 you know how many in Celsius. I've been, since I've been here, Jason. Mm-hmm. Can you hold up? Yeah, they're still fucking empty. You can't find some drinks. Frozen food is all gone. I know I couldn't get ice cream there for a while. I have to go to 7-Eleven. And the guy's always nice. He doesn't even ask me if I want a bag. He just puts it in the bag for me. Because yeah, he knows. Yeah, California, they try to charge you a 10 cent or something. Yeah, yeah. Some bullshit like that. Yeah, no, it's it's nice to be away from that, right? That lifestyle to this is, is much more um, accommodating. I just feel lighter as a human being. Uh, is the I'm, analogy I'm, I'm, I'm going. Not, I'm not a... I'm not a conspiracy guy, but I have to say these policies in West Coast, especially California, mm. I think part of me thinks it's deliberate because you make your stay so uh, unpleasant that they move to other states. Mm. But what happened is... They, Uninhabitable. They take their liberal policies to other red states and eventually they're no longer red, but purple, not quite blue. So... It's good for, compromised. Uh, it's a good for Democratic Party, I think, because they've really flipped, you know, Nevada and fucking Arizona, you know. Well, the stand-up comedians are going to keep the con- the state honest. Yeah. Wherever comedy's flourishing, people are flourishing. Where people are flourishing, there there's conversations. There's there's yeah. look at how thick this guy is. Yeah. That's a big old like lab something. He's got big old mitts on him. Dude, I think that dog weighs more than the guy fucking walking him. Like, if that dog gets pissed off, that guy is going to be dragging. Did you like Sopranos? <laughs> uh, I watched uh, one episode. I think I'm going to rewatch it again. 
I don't want to. I don't want fake drama in my life. But it, it, it was. But you know, it's one of those seminal shows. Sorry, we got to do another bird show. Hold on. Look at how look at how nice these guys are. Oh, I just squirted shit into the water. Did you see that? Right to my mouth. Wait, 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 wait. Jason. Those are my children. He just look at me. He just uh, sprayed when I pointed at him. What is those those big ones? Yeah, those are. The feathers look cool. Fuck! It's massive. Look at that. Yeah, those aren't even the really big ones, but they're waiting uh, for bur- uh, fish to kind of swim into this V, and then they poach them. What kind of bird is that? Those are some sort of ducks for sure. That, those I understand, but these fuckers right here. Yeah, these guys are. There's probably a sign around here. We're standing here. They look like Chappelle in the trees. Mm. That's it. Yeah, though that's a big bird. There's these white cranes that are very cool looking. The one that you were gonna shoot him with a shotgun? Yeah. <laughs> Would you shoot? No, that's too far to shoot with a shotgun. You need a hunting rifle. Yeah. It's you fine. should just, that'd be funny actually. You with a clear plastic bag with nothing but dead turtles and birds just dragging it down the path on a Saturday. Kids are screaming, throwing themselves in the water. Oh my God, I just came home fishing. Another big old dog. Yeah, hi. Wow. Yeah, this is a very dog uh, city too, it's which I love. Animal yeah. Well, I don't know what uh, shows I got coming up. You saying there's nothing tonight, right? Uh, there's something every night, but we can. Uh, How we'll do you figure find it out? What, where's the shows and stuff? Uh, Google. Huh? There's every city's got a website with a calendar on it, so I can kind of pick and choose, and uh, go to the spots that I enjoy and. Then do the the paid stuff on the Fridays and Saturdays, you know. Um, is there just a regular infrastructure to perform, rehearse, and then deliver? And there's all these clubs opening up. It's fucking Are you outstanding. In San Antonio? No, i never been into Texas until I stepped off a plane three months oh, ago. Oh, really? Yeah, i never been in this fucking state. I'm under- and this is the most south how far, how far I've ever been in the United States in my life. I wonder how far it's, um, if anything's going on in San Antonio. There's shows gonna, across you're gonna, the you're state. Going to, you're going to love uh, Riverwalk. It's I, a really amazing walk. I want to see every third, first, and, and second city in every state and you're across be the, this lovely how, country where you can say what you how, want. You'll be amazed by how small Alamo was, the fortress. Yeah, Ozzy went to jail for peeing on the Alamo. What? Do you know about Ozzy Osbourne? Uh-uh. Uh, holding, um, uh, yeah, he, he was arrested for pissing on the Alamo, Ozzy Osbourne. Why was he doing that? Ozzy stuff. Hammered. And, um, he, yeah, I heard it was very small. Huh. I'm doing pull-ups while I urinate blood into my pants. I did one extra one because two girls ran by. So I pulled up. And one I, of them said faggot. That's it. Go look at that guy taking his cancer uncle for a walk. <laughs> Fucking Mr. Philadelphia over here with a hood. Everybody, you know what they call me in my building? What? Count Dracula. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see? There's the Bat Bridge, Congress. It's cool, right? What? Yeah. Batman lives in Austin. Thanks for listening, everybody. We've come to a full circle here on the uh, bird tour. And uh, I'd like to say thanks for listening to Yoshi and I while we mumbled and I pointed out birds and you tried to make points about serious subjects. And uh, I'm none of this stuff is serious. I had uh, squirrels. It's all meaningless. And squirrels and marijuana will ruin any production. Thanks, Josh. <laughs> Stop! Stop! What happened was true. The most bizarre and brutal series of crimes.